Would Jesus wear a mask? I don't know. Can the avatar of an omnipotent god get sick? What's up, everyone? Today we are revisiting Paul and Morgan, but before we do that, a couple of things. One, if you haven't subscribed already, why not go ahead and do so? I'd say hit the bell notification icon, but apparently that doesn't do anything. But, you know, eventually if YouTube fixes it, maybe it'll do something. So, I guess hit it anyway. But before we talk about why Paul and Morgan think Jesus would or wouldn't wear a mask, or why the question even really matters, let's go ahead and get into fan art, and then we'll get into the video at hand. First, we have a post-it note sketch from License Plate Jacket Radio. And then we have me with apparently a cat girl tentacle cirrus stand uh, by that one dude. And then finally, we have a princess cirrus by Bumblin' Bee, because we couldn't really get out of this without Rule 63 and copious amounts of it at that. As always, thank you all for your fan art submissions, and let's go ahead and suffer together through the Paul and Morgan show. I mean, it can't be any worse than Trump's America, right? Just want to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. We are not judging anyone who has decided yeah. masks a thousand percent work. I am full steam ahead wearing a mask for the rest of my life. That's one side. <laughs> and then there's the other side of masks are the worst, and they don't do anything, and blah, blah, blah. So yes. we, you know... This is not a video to bash. No, oh, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Wow, okay, yeah, no. So, sorry, when when it's about public safety and about whether or not, I don't know, my grandparents or someone else like that is going to die because you decided to be a negligent dickwad and not wear a mask out in public, I, I don't give a shit about whether or not you actually uh, care about offending somebody. I, I honestly think that people should be offended if, <laughs> if they're blatantly wrong about something that does, in fact, affect the lives of millions. You know, kind of like healthcare. Yeah. anybody either side it really isn't and as you guys know morgan and i are not experts we're not holy shit i agree with something in a paul and morgan video i would venture to say a decent amount of you have heard of marcus rogers nope but after this i'm sure i'm going to regret hearing about him He's on YouTube, he does evangelical, cultural, just relevant type videos. He made one that I was watching yesterday. There's a lot in this video. At the crux of it, the title of it is Two Types of Christians When It Comes to Masks. And there's no way in the world Jesus would walk around wearing a mask. He was literally touching lepers. And so the wisdom of that time was what? The lepers had to be cast out. They had to be isolated. You could, you, they had to let you know that they were a leper. You couldn't touch them. You couldn't interact with them. You didn't want them to breathe on you. And Jesus went out there and he was interacting with them. Marcus, uh, question. Are you a demigod? Cause, Cause like, if you are, let me know. But if not, this argument about how the conventional wisdom of the time was this, but Jesus was such a rebel because he ignored the conventional wisdom of the time. You know why he was able to ignore the conventional wisdom of the time? If I grant that Jesus was real and had all the supernatural powers, there's the key word, that uh, he was uh, claimed to have, then you do realize that that means that the reason he was able to interact with lepers is because unlike the common folk, he was a demigod with supernatural powers. And it's those supernatural powers that made it to where he could be around lepers, right? Are, are, are you a demigod with supernatural powers? Because, like, if so, that that's that's news. That, that's, that's really... Are any of your followers demigods with supernatural powers? Because, like, this whole bucking conventional wisdom thing, a demigod can buck conventional wisdom. They're a demigod. And he said to us that greater things we would do. So, here's the question. Would you bash Jesus for not wearing a mask because he wouldn't wear a mask? Yes, because I have no way of knowing that he's a demigod and therefore immune to coronavirus. So he says it pretty stinking confidently. And I, I will say, guys, like that was just one small part. We will link the full video below because he hits on a lot of stuff. But he does say later on in the video, even though you can probably tell that he's not a big fan of masks, he does mm -hmm. say that he does wear masks in the stores and on airplanes to not cause a ruckus. So he's wrong, but he doesn't want to stir a pot up, so he wears them anyway. So he's both stupid and a coward. Well, at least he's not endangering anybody, except for the internet. That said, so I just want to give him a d disclaimer in a sense, but that right there, that 30 second clip. He's very confident that Jesus would not wear a mask. He said it and then he really kind of went after Christians at the end. What did he say? Like, would the Christians be mad angry at Jesus for not wearing a mask. Yeah, would you be bashing Jesus for not wearing a mask? And it's like, 
Yeah, some, some would. would. Some definitely would. I mean, when Jesus was on this earth walking around, he was getting bashed for going to the people who had the coronavirus. They were lepers. Like, compared to, like, let's compare it to where we're at right now. Obviously, it's not the exact same, but there's there are similarities. Like Marcus said, I mean, these lepers of that day. Right, it's were, not the same. Lepers was way worse. They cast them out of the city because they all thought it to be contagious, and I'm sure it was contagious on some level. One, yes, leprosy is contagious. It's not very highly communicable, but it is, in fact, contagious. Uh, secondly, you know that framing this whole thing, would you bash Jesus for wearing a mask, is contingent on one thing. Jesus being Jesus, the, the very unique character of Jesus. A person who, unlike the common man, unlike you and me, could cure someone of leprosy. Now, if you go to somebody who may or may not have COVID, can you cure them by just not wearing a mask near them? If not, then congratulations, you're sitting in category error city, and nobody should care whether or not Jesus would or wouldn't wear a mask. It doesn't matter. None of you were Jesus. I mean, leprosy. So outside the city that lepers had to announce that they were coming close to people without leprosy, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. When they saw the way Jesus was interacting with these people, they're freaking out probably. They're freaking out, they're upset. No, do not go close to these people. You're not wearing a mask, you're gonna get leprosy, and then if you get leprosy, you could spread it to other people. And Already got a bit of a problem. You know the mask doesn't protect you, right? Like this, maybe this is why you don't want to come out on either side in this conversation and not offend anybody because you don't understand the science of how the damn things work. The mask goes on your face so that when you cough, if you happen to be a carrier of COVID-19, the water droplets get stuck in the mask and do not transfer the virus out. They do not protect you from others. They protect others from you because there's a two week long incubation period. This is something that our president probably should be informed of, but you know, he went to the debate with coronavirus anyway, you know, just whatever. But any, th that's, that's besides the point. The debate's besides the point. Point is, you seem to not understand how masks work because you're framing it this way. I hope later in the video you prove me wrong. That would be great. Jesus did so many things that were against the cultural norms, that were against what was acceptable yeah. at that time. Ah, yes, the great argument. It's against cultural norms, therefore it's good, because that's what Jesus would do. All right, let's talk about gay marriage then. Fact of the matter is, at one point, that was considered wrong, and that was considered against the cultural norms. But then it became something that is more widely accepted, even though two of our Supreme Court justices seem to think it's okay to argue striking it down. But again, things that are besides the point. Fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter that Jesus would or wouldn't do something, and it doesn't matter if something is or against cultural norms. None of those are reasons to or to not do something. I mean, people looked at him like a crazy man. They called him demonic. Like, they said yeah. that he was insane and out of his mind because of the way he lived his life, because he was so unafraid of anything and everything. Yeah, when you're an avatar of God or a demigod, that's a thing you can do. You can also do things like walk on water and not fear death because it's just gonna be a three day long vacation. Right. I know that there are people who are like, yes, right on. But I also understand that there are people who are like, no, I think Jesus would wear a mask and here's why. Here are the Bible verses that mm -hmm. I think like back my thought up. I can see both sides for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think Jesus, you know, he was compassionate, full of compassion and mercy, cared for the orphan and widow and the mm -hmm. downcast. Yeah. So, I mean, Jesus had that side to him too. Like, absolutely. That was yeah at the core of who Jesus was, but his love oftentimes didn't look the way we expect it to, mm -hmm. we want it to. It sometimes came in the form of drowning children. Oh, sorry, that was his dad, who's also him, except it's not. The Trinity is completely incomprehensible. Yeah, I feel like the main thing that I've heard about like why we should wear a mask, people are like, even if the mask doesn't work at all, if it makes one person feel safer, then we should wear it because that is being compassionate and loving. We're all doing our part. We're all unifying. Yes. And Stop my, Corona. And my thought is, how many times did Jesus do things to make everyone feel comfortable? Everyone feel comfortable. Dude, Jesus like, was, I mean, I think if you looked at it through, through any of the gospels, 
he was making people uncomfortable. Oh, look, advice from a couple of relationship gurus on YouTube that's going to get people killed. How cute. But let's go ahead and get this misunderstanding of Mascal's wager out of the way. It's not that if you wear the mask, you can make people feel more comfortable. And that's the reason you should do it. It's if the science is right and you wear the masks, you save lives. And if the science is wrong and you wear masks, you've potentially saved lives. But either way, the masks don't actually cause much of an issue or a hindrance in your life. Therefore, the mere chance that they save somebody's lives are in fact a better gamble than just gambling with their lives wholesale. It has nothing to do with making the people around you feel better or more comfortable. It has everything to do with just potentially saving their lives. Yeah, he was calling people out of the fear. And I'm not saying that if you wear a mask, you're living in fear. That's not what I'm saying. I know people who wear masks and they're not fearful people. But yeah, like I would say that Jesus didn't try to make people comfortable and he had such a way of going about it that I think like anyone who came at him was like, why aren't you wearing a mask? Like he would have such a godly, perfect yeah. response. Direct, to but still full of truth and grace even. Even though, dude, some of his words were savage. Jesus, can you explain to us why you won't wear a mask? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, because I'm God. And like, the mask is to protect you guys. I'm, uh, kind of immune. So, yeah. Step, step, step. You guys aren't gonna, like, nail me to a cross or anything later, are you? I think he would, like, redirect it to you and be like, yeah. My child, why are you wearing a mask? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes, Jesus, the god of whataboutism. The stuff that he said, eat my body and drink my blood, which was just crazy for Jews to hear. Paul, I think you're gonna find that that's crazy to hear at all like that that's that's still crazy now spitting in a man's eyes spitting on the dirt and rubbing it in his eyes like yeah. he was not trying to fit in yeah if you were dying of something that i could cure with penicillin and i just stuck the needle in you you would think i'm weird too if this was a few hundred years ago but just like how i would have access to modern medicine and someone from several hundred years ago wouldn't jesus had access to supernatural god healing powers and therefore didn't necessarily have to fit in if he knew how to cure people now the more interesting thing is that he didn't cure more people he, he just cured a couple of people when other people were watching uh, to, to prove that he was either God or just a really good wizard. No. I will say, though, on the other end, and, and Marcus alluded to this later in his video, but, like, would, if Jesus were alive today and the state law said you have to wear a mask to go into Walmart or Kroger, would Jesus have done that? Yeah. It, yeah. It's tough because that's kind of where, like, even though we have some opinions on the masks and we're not big fans, we typically... Unless we're feeling really right. convicted and bold, we typically will wear them into a Walmart or a Kroger. Right! I, too, wear my mask unless I'm feeling particularly uh, jonesed about not being able to kill people around me. That's 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yeah. I may dip them below the nose or whatever. <laughs> yep, I just sometimes just put it right below the nose just just because I'm feeling a little rebellious. What are you, what are you saying? I'm, I'm breathing all over the papers you're holding. Nah, nah, nah. What? It, it's been three weeks and your grandma got infected. Now she's in the ER. And it's because you were infected. And, and, and it was because I I decided to be a fucking dumbass and, and infect you. I, mm, I, I'm sorry. I just, I really needed to be a rebel. A rebel! I needed to be a rebel for Jesus. You know, to send people to heaven faster. I feel like out of respect for that specific store, maybe he would, but I think, I don't know. You know, it's one thing for a store specifically to say like, hey, please wear a mask in our store. It's another thing for the government to say like, wear the mask, you must submit, you must obey, like, mm -hmm. okay. You know what world wouldn't need state mandates on masks? A world where dumb shits like you weren't feeling extra rebellious and just either not wearing them or wearing them improperly because you just feel like that's what you want to do that day. You, you don't need state mandates in a world where dipshits like you don't exist. But unfortunately, 
we live in this one, where I'm dealing with you now. Like someone might say, but like, he's Jesus, whereas we might be more susceptible to illness and stuff. I just think that's a cop-out, because again, Jesus said, you will do far greater things than I. How can we do far greater things than him? We've got to believe as much as he believed. We have to have the faith that he had. And how can we have that faith? By drowning. I'm going to pause you right here for comedic effect. You should probably be doing things that Jesus would do, except doing them far greater. So when Jesus walked on water, why don't you go ahead and walk on water? When Jesus went into a hospital and cured people, why don't you go ahead and do that? Oh, wait, you can't because you're not a demigod who can just die and come back in three days? Oh, right. Sorry. Forgot. Maybe you should actually try being a good human being first before you start trying to emulate a god whose powers you don't have. Drowning out the noises of the world and getting in the word by looking to the father rather than CNN or Fox News by, you know, not living in fear of this or that, like... Right, if you guys look at the entirety of the video, uh, you do mention that people who wear masks aren't living in fear. Uh, but now you make this point here about why you shouldn't live in fear and, and comport wearing the mask it's almost like a contradiction um so wearing a mask isn't living in fear i agree with that point you made earlier in the video so why are you talking about living in fear right now there is in fact a virus out there and it is in fact killing people and it could in fact infect your grandma so it's not really being fearful to just acknowledge reality it was you know the pharisees back then had these rules and these beliefs and these laws and this is what you followed if you wanted to be a godly person and an honorable human being and like then jesus came and totally wrecked everything that they were saying and i think it's interesting like we listen to our scientists and our governor and our president whoever and like they tell us these things and we have to listen to them because these are the people who like know the most right science <laughs> but then there are other people that come in and are like no this is wrong like they're lying to you like the news is lying to you these scientists that are paid yeah. by these big pharmaceutical organizations they're sure. lying Right, so um, if you're going to go ahead and make the comparison between you know Pharisees and scientists, maybe be consistent and just stay there instead of trying to add in like the news and everything else. So let's let's stick with the scientist part because I don't give a shit about the news. Where the scientists are concerned, they're not like Pharisees because with the Pharisees, they were able to be subverted by Jesus because Jesus unlike the Pharisees, had been there since the beginning of time, and therefore his perspective on scripture was the most accurate perspective possible, not the perspective the Pharisees had, where they were merely interpreting scripture. Unlike scientists, who, as opposed to your grand Mabby Karen on Facebook, actually understand the science behind masks and why they work. They can actually measure COVID-19 and measure the actual virus itself and figure out how many microns in size it is, see how it transfers, how it has to be on droplets. The scientists have the perspective that Jesus technically would in the scriptural stories, because as opposed to the Karen on Facebook, who would be the Pharisees here, uh, looking at everything and making up their own conclusions, in this case, scientists are a little more like Jesus, where they can actually zero down and get a full perspective on what's going on. Your methodology here is to say that you shouldn't always trust authority figures, and I understand that, and I agree with that, but the way you're going about this is so twisted, and given the state of the world right now, I can only assume that you don't understand that <laughs> this kind of shit is why we have 200,000 and more people dying. You have dead people who are probably dead because some dumb shit decided to follow your advice and not wear a mask. And so here they are. They only wore a mask because authority, but they also thought authority was dumb because you were making that argument. So now somebody's grandma's dead because of you. Y you've got blood on your hands. You fucking idiot. Wow, sir, if you're being really mean in this episode, I'm going to tell you that in the comment section and or an email. Yeah, I don't like people dying. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be honest, their video basically just continues like this for the rest of the three or four minutes that it's actually there, uh, leading to them just saying that, you know, God's ways are not our ways, and I think that's kind of the, the whole point. Uh, Jesus was a, was a demigod slash avatar uh, slash ice cube, depending on how modalist you are. Uh, so, yeah, no, his ways are not human ways. So even if I grant the entire Christian narrative, it doesn't matter what Jesus would or wouldn't do in a pandemic, because he's a god. 
it, it, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, Paul and Morgan are being incredibly wishy-washy on which side of the fence they're on until they actually point out, well, no, actually, our opinion is the masks don't work. Eh, but we sometimes wear them, unless we're feeling rebellious, and, and then we just kind of put them under our nose, and even though we know that's not how they're supposed to be worn. Like, holy shit. How? How can you be this flippant with the lives of others? I, I understand. There's a perspective here that, you know, if they die, they'll probably go to heaven. But let me just go ahead and, and make a Christian argument for you. Just right here. Me? You? We're going to have a conversation, and it's going to be framed within the context of Christianity. Let's say that the science is right, and COVID is real. And you do, in fact, infect someone, and then they infect someone else, and then a couple people die because of you. Um, So it's actually worse than people dying. Because from the Christian perspective, these are potential souls that could have been saved. You even might have had the potential to save them. They might have been planning on going to your church uh, here in the next week or so, and you could have saved them. But then, of course, they're not able to go to church that week because they're in the hospital on a ventilator. And then they end up dying because, well, they've got some comorbidities. And so, well, COVID's just the final nail in the coffin for them. They're dead because you infected them. Either you infected somebody who spread it to them or you infected them directly. Doesn't matter. Either way, you led to a soul going to hell directly. That's worse than it just being someone who died. Because in my perspective, they just died. But from your perspective, from the Christian perspective, that is a potential lost soul. And it would be your fault. You. You literally would have been able to save them. Not just their life, but their soul. And you, by being so fucking flippant and fucking stupid, led to somebody going to hell. Congratulations. That's the reality you live in. It's the reality you painted for yourself. And it's the reality that many of your followers are probably going to end up doing as well. So if they believe that it is their job to save people's souls so that they don't go to hell, but they end up infecting people and killing them before they might have a chance to repent, they might have even been planning to. It's your fault. You did it. Congratulations. That hell, that, that soul in hell, your fault. I don't get it. How can you be this irresponsible with other people's lives? I don't understand. I, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't understand how I can sit here and look at you and be worried about your life, but know in the back of my head that you're not worried about mine. And and you can say it's, oh, well, if you don't believe that the virus is going to get people, uh, then, you know, it's not actually being flippant with your life. Yes, the fuck it is. Yes, it is. Look, I'm a pragmatist. I care about end goals. I care about useful things. As a result, a lot of my morality ends up being kind of consequentialist. So if you engage in an action that directly kills someone... I'm sorry, I don't give a shit about the intent. Not really. You know, if you, you kill my grandma, I don't care what your intent was. I don't. I don't have to. A at all. But can we reach any conclusions from this video? I think one major conclusion we can reach is that Paul and Morgan are not only flippant with their own health, with the health of others, and with the health of people who are watching them and the people they might come in contact with, they also kind of skirt around these questions instead of giving actual direct answers on their position. They don't want to offend anybody, but they're perfectly fine basically espousing an ideology that will lead to people's deaths. So, you know, it's that whole, like, decorum thing where you are more worried about how you sound instead of the actual substance of what you're saying. That seems to be Paul and Morgan's entire shtick in this video. They're more worried about being polite and, and not coming on either side of the fence, but the few times they actually let their ideology slip in, then you realize it's, you know, actually a danger to the people around them. So that's that's my takeaway. The other takeaway is that apparently uh, we should care about whether or not Jesus uh, would wear a mask. And uh, I think it doesn't matter either way because he's a god. So the rules are not exactly the same for him. So that's where I sit. But wherever you sit, I want to know. Let me know in the comment section below or ping me on Discord. But honestly, I prefer the comment section. I read all of those like every day. Uh, even if I don't respond to all of them. So if you have any critique or you have any comments or anything like that, please let me know in the comment section below. Please leave a like. Please share with your friends if you want to. Uh, and if you enjoyed, then awesome. And if not, well, you've probably already told me in the comment section exactly how many ways I can probably jump off a bridge and attempt to walk on water myself. But with all that said, you've made it to the end of the video. So these are my lovely patrons. They are the people that allow me to continue doing what I do in the capacity that I do. So if you want to keep supporting my work, the best way to do it is via Patreon. 
Patreon. You can also become a channel member. Uh, many of the same benefits are available to channel members if you'd prefer that as opposed to Patreon. Uh, or you can, you know, do the supporting on live streams, any of that stuff. Any support of any variety is always welcome. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to do what I do on my channel. I wouldn't be able to do it if not for your support. YouTube really doesn't pay enough on its own uh, for a channel of my size, but that's fine. You guys have been amazing in helping me continue to do this thing. So thank you. I, I don't I don't want to spend this entire time gushing about patrons, though sometimes I feel like maybe I should. Uh, anyway, uh, this video should be coming out on Wednesday, though if you're a patron, obviously you get it early. Uh, that means tomorrow we are doing a video game stream. It's going to be Among Us. We're going to be doing cycles of people on Among Us. So uh, if you want to backstab me, uh, that's a good chance too. So hopefully I will be able to see you guys then. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here.